Yes, sir. All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this Monday, April 4th public meeting of the Board of Gary County Commissioners. I want to welcome uh, a full house of people here today and anybody online. If uh, everyone would please stand with me for the pledge, and then Commissioner Titchener will lead us in the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you would bow with me for a word of prayer. Precious and loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you today thanking you for the opportunity to be here today, Lord, and we thank you for all those that are present. Lord, we just ask your guidance and direction in everything we do here. And Lord, we just continue to praise you and glorify you, and we do all this in your precious holy name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Mr. Nall, are there any additions, corrections, or deletions to the public meeting agenda? No, sir, there are none. Hearing none, we have a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. We have a motion and a second. Second. Motion and second. Agenda approved by mutual consent. Everybody got a copy of the minutes in advance of the meeting. Any questions or concerns to the minutes? Hearing none, we have a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. We have a motion, we have a second. Second. Motion and a second. Minutes approved by mutual consent. Moving right along, uh, the first item on the agenda, uh, we do have uh, the Arbor Day in Garrett County recognition, and we have some poster contest winners. We have some folks here. Uh, Melissa, I'll ask you uh, to come on up and uh, if you would stand, yeah, we'll put you on the big, you're on TV. Uh oh, I'm on the big screen now. All right, so um, every year for, for Arbor Day, the Maryland Forest Service and the Garrett County Forestry Board, which each county in Baltimore City has its own forestry board, sponsor a poster contest for fifth grade students. And it has a tree-related theme. Um, here in Garrett County, we do offer awards to the first, second, and third place winners within our own county. Um, so we're gonna recognize those students here today. Uh, we have, I think all three of them are here. Um, we had 11 entries this year, and all three of our winners happened to be from the new Calvary Christian Academy Garrett County campus. So they had really good participation from their school, and, and they had some of the best posters this year. Um, also, we brought white oak seedlings. So we have a white oak seedling for each of you, and if anybody in the audience would like a white oak seedling to take home in celebration of Arbor Day, you're welcome to it. Maryland's Arbor Day is this Wednesday, April 6th. The State Arbor Day falls on the last Friday of April, which I think is the 29th this year. I didn't look at my calendar, but it's always always the last Friday of April. Um, so if we could get, uh, if we have Raya Brenneman, she was our first place poster winner. And we do have awards for her. This is why I put these in my wallet the other day, so I didn't forget. Come on up. So she's, a, she's our first place winner. Don't go too far because we'll get a picture with yeah. everybody. Um, she got a $75 award. Elizabeth Most is our second place. Come on up. And she, and she gets a $50 award. And Emma Wass is our third place. And she gets a $25 award. All right. And before to, before okay. you walk you away, uh, we do have a proclamation for Arbor Day um, <clears throat> from the Garrett County Commission. Whereas Garrett County is extremely proud of its vast array of cherished natural resources and the commemoration of Arbor Day serves as a fitting tribute to our mighty trees and other treasures. And whereas Garrett County's forests constitute one of our most valuable, renewable and recyclable resources, providing timber for industry, habitat for wildlife, watershed protection, clean air, improved water quality, and recreational use. And whereas Garrett County is pleased to recognize the many conservation organizations and other concerned citizens who have joined with the Maryland Department of Natural Resources Forest Service to wisely plant trees for the future. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Garrett County Commissioners, do hereby proclaim uh, April 6, 2022 is Arbor Day in Garrett County and do commend this observance to all of our citizens signed by commissioners. Heimball, Tishnell, and myself. And uh, 
We appreciate the trees. Oh, you want to bring the tree up here? Yeah. Why don't, so Why don't we bring the the winners up? Thanks, buddy. Here, I'll give you this. And Mike, why don't you and Melissa jump in? Yeah. Bring your pictures. Yeah, bring your pictures. Bring your posters up. We'll just line you guys up here. Yeah. Just well, right up there. Put a tree team shelter on it. Congratulations, all three of you. Congratulations, guys. Hold, hold your pictures up. Yep, hold them up. Uh, you're not in front of your face, turn to your right. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, guys. Right. Thank you. I want to thank the commissioners thank for everything. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Thanks, Larry. Well done. Thank you. Yep. Well done. Good, to be back Good job, first. girls. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Larry. Thanks, Mike. Would anybody like a white XC in the room? Melissa, if you can email me their names. Yes. Thank you. I will do that. Thank you. I see a couple hands going up for the seedlings. I'll take another one if you have any more left. Can you have more than one for a person? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Larry's going to come over and plan them for me. <laughs> <laughs> Is that going to be a motion in the minutes? Yeah. yeah. Hold them to it? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, for the next uh, item on the agenda, I'm going to ask Lisa Thayer Welsh and Luann Riddell to come up, please. Uh, yeah, just stand over there, and uh, it is with great pleasure that uh, we get to recognize a great young woman uh, today, uh, Sarah Holzkamp, um, who was named in the first Garrett County uh, young lady ever to be named to the 2022 uh, Maryland Young Women Leaders by the Maryland Commission of Women, correct? Yes. So we have a, uh, a proclamation honoring that uh, achievement, and then uh, I'll see if uh, our, our representatives, Luann represents the Maryland Commission of Women and the Garrett County chapter, and, and uh, Lisa is uh, very active with the Garrett County ch uh, chapter of the Commission on Women. Um, so let me read the proclamation, and then I'll see if you guys would like to share anything, and then we'll ask uh, Sarah to give her prepared remarks. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, and then we'll have her uh, get some pictures. But uh, we're pleased to uh, offer this proclamation honoring Sarah Hull's camp as the 2022 Maryland Young Women Leaders, whereas the Maryland Young Women Leaders Award was first established as Women of Tomorrow Award in 1997 to recognize extraordinary young women who have demonstrated an exceptional commitment to leadership, community service, and academic excellence. And whereas this year, the name of the award was changed to more accurately reflect its purpose of recognizing and encouraging future women leaders. And whereas the Maryland Young Women Leaders Award honors a female high school student who demonstrates a commitment to leadership, community service, and academic excellence. And whereas the Maryland Young Women Leaders Award motivates young women to broaden their horizons and to secure their engagement with their communities, now, therefore, the Board of County Commissioners is pleased to honor Sarah Holzkamp as the 2022 Maryland Young Woman Leaders recipient and also the first to receive this award from Garrett County, signed by Commissioner Seinball, Titchenell, and myself. And ladies, uh, whatever you would like to add to that. I would just like to say I was very proud to be representing Garrett County at this time, Sarah, and how pleased your parents must be and you as well. And I wish you great success in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. And as the chair of the Garrett County Commission for Women, we're very proud. Um, I ran into Sarah's parents the other day, and I've also seen Sarah since she won the award and, and, and uh, congratulated them, and we are very pleased to do that. 
Um, and if I can have two more seconds, um, because the Garrett County Commission for Women, as you know, is going to have its annual Hall of Fame brunch where we're going to um, induct up to three women from Garrett County who have contributed greatly to our community at that event. We will also recognize a woman of tomorrow locally at that event and award some scholarships and we're also going to be inviting Sarah to that event. That is scheduled on Saturday, April the 30th at Duchess at Silver Tree and tickets are available through the Garrett County Commission for Women's Facebook. There's an event right or anyone can contact me and I'll make sure that they get a reservation in a place at that event. But we will again have the opportunity we hope to, to see Sarah and congratulate her because um, you know, once again, the young people of Garrett County shine bright all the way across the state. Absolutely. Sarah, come on up. You're uh, welcome to share any words you may want to or just come and accept your just proclamation. Don't you. have anything to say. <laughs> come on up. We'll hold you here for a minute. Ladies, if you want to join us. Oh, The left. One, two, three, one more. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> All right, the next item on the agenda is uh, the resolution approval and execution of the 2022 uh, Garrett County tax sale date and time. Um, Scott, I'll go ahead and take this, and then if there's anything you want to add. Uh, so resolution number 22, 2022-2 uh, of the Board of County Commissioners of Garrett County, Maryland, a body politic and corporate and governing body of Garrett County, Maryland, for the purpose of setting the date and time of tax sale under 14-808 of the tax property article of the Annotated Code of Maryland. Uh, the timeline the registration opens Monday, May 2nd, 2022 at 10 o'clock a.m. Registration closes Friday, May 20th, 22 at noon. Uh, you cannot bid unless you are registered by May 20th of 2022. Registration fee, which is refundable, is uh, due by Friday, May 20th at 4 o'clock. Tax sale bidding opens Monday, May 23rd at 10 a.m. Tax sale bidding closes Friday, May 27th. Uh, build, uh, bidding closes in five property batches beginning at 10 a.m. And then uh, 10.30, 11, 11.30, and noon. And payments are due by Friday, May 27th by 4 o'clock p.m. Um, any questions about resolution number 2022-2? Scott, is there anything to add to that? Oh, thank you. I, I would add that the information is available on the, our county website also. All right. Information available <clears throat> at the county website. Um, and any questions on that, call the finance department. As for Scott Weeks. Um, <clears throat> All right, if there are no other questions or comments, uh, do we have a motion to adopt resolution number 2022-2? So we have a motion, we have a second. Second. Motion and second, question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, and the final uh, action item on the agenda, uh, the Garrett County Purchasing Department. Uh, Mr. Nall, what do you have for us? Uh, yes, sir. We have bid number 22-0310, Avilton Community Association Sidewalk Construction. Uh, this is for with POS funding. We had three bids were received. Whitehorse Woodworks in the amount of $20,700. Rudy's Industrial Contracting in the amount of $22,500. And Blatzel Corporation in the amount of $31,433. Uh, after reviewing the bids and in consultation with the uh, community association, the recommendation is to award the bid to White House Woodworks in the amount of $20,700. All 
Questions on the Appleton Community Associate, Association sidewalk construction. We'll take the next one too. And the second bid this evening is bid number 22-0303, Deep Creek Lake Wakes, Wastewater Treatment Plant Office Building Roof and Gutter Replacement. Uh, again, three bids were received. Rough roofers and sheet metal in the amount of $58,000 dynamic general contracting in the amount of $81,000 and tri-state roofing and sheet metal in the amount of $85,350. Again, after reviewing the bids for compliance uh, and consultation with the Public Works Utilities Division, the recommendation is to award the bid to rough roofing and sheet metal in the amount of $58,000. Thank you. Any questions on the roof and gutter replacement? Hearing none, we'll do this as a package. I'll take a motion to accept bid number 22-0310. Uh, the Appleton Community Association sidewalk construction bid to White House Woodworks for $20,700 and bid number 22-0303 uh, for the Deep Creek Lake uh, Water Treatment Facility Office Building and Roof and Gutter Replacement to Rough Roofers Incorporated for the amount of $58,000. Make a motion to accept both bids. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. Motion and second. Question on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, announcements. The next public uh, meeting will be here Tuesday, April the 19th. Same time, same place. Uh, we are starting tonight uh, the fiscal 23 budget presentations. Uh, as soon as this meeting adjourns, uh, we'll go to the Board of Education uh, budget presentation for the fiscal year, but before we do that, uh, are there any questions or comments from the public? Hearing none, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn the public meeting? So moved. Meeting adjourned, and uh, we'll turn it over to the Board of Education. If you want to wait, that's fine. But I'm okay, but I just I ask sometimes. I'm going to continue to stream it. So you usually have my table. Do you want us to just sit where we're going? How do you want? How do you want to set this up? I think we should all stand right here. Hey, you guys hold the money. I'll do whatever you want to do. Sit Indian style here in front. Like or oh, you could do a power presentation, Allison. Or yes, we do. Have a okay, yeah. so you can stop over there, and we'll get you set. Karen yeah. yeah, Karen emailed that up today. Okay, to Carol. So let's see if I have it. Then. I'm thinking we set a table up. We can just have whoever. Absolutely. Whoever's going to present and speak, uh, if they can do it from the podium so that the streaming can pick that up. She told me if it didn't work, she'd email it to me, and she didn't email it. So I'm assuming it worked. Does she have the Yeah, she's power? forwarded to me, yep.
Okay. Do we do we just nod if we need you to just advance? point, nod, holler, or throw something? Hey, Kevin, we'll get you. Right. Wave. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm sure we'll work it out. Well, thank you for having us. Uh, as you can see by the title, this is the fiscal year 2023, uh, our proposed operating and capital budget. Uh, I want to thank you, thank the commissioners, thank Mr. Null, and thank Mr. Weeks for um, having us. I didn't realize we were the first uh, to present, so I can't make a joke about saving the best for last, but uh, we do appreciate being first on your calendar. Uh, also, um, this is, I believe, my sixth, fifth or sixth presentation uh, to the county commissioners. I know this was, uh, we had abandoned it for a couple of years in there, and I just really want to thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to talk about our priorities when it comes to the budget. We know uh, we are your largest uh, funding uh, obligation, and we do recognize that and appreciate it very much. You will see um, at the end, we often add accolades of the school system um, and all of the things that we're proud of. We did not do that this year, mostly for brevity, but also um, I don't think we got the opportunity last year due to COVID and all of the restrictions uh, that were happening last year. But really our accolades over the last two and a half years absolutely go out to the entire school system. Uh, from the food service to IT that stood up a one-to-one -one initiative way ahead of when we had initially planned, our Schoology platform, our cafeteria, our uh, bus drivers, our bus contractors who hung with us and came to work every day no matter what we were asking, whether it was virtual or in person. And certainly our teachers, our administrators deserve a ton of credit for uh, the job that they did over the last two and a half years during the during the pandemic. So we did leave off the accolades, but a big thank you go out to everyone in the entire school system for their work um, for the last couple of years. And certainly uh, the Board of Education members as well, because it has not been easy and we do really appreciate um, everything that everyone has done to get us through. So next. All right, so uh, again, as we said, this is a proposed budget, and in this budget, you will see uh, the priorities that we have set um, moving forward in the FY 2023 operating budget. Um, to support the mission, vision, and goals of the Garrett County Board of Education, the ESSA Consolidated Plan, which is the old master plan, the reopening plan, the goals of the budget do include to continue to maintain and sustain a safe in-person learning while addressing all of the health and safety concerns and our instructional recovery. Complying with all mandatory requirements, of course, of the Blueprint for Maryland's future legislation. Continued recovery. Uh, we know that there was learning loss, so we're gonna focus on high academic standards, meeting the social, emotional, and behavior needs of all students, and attracting and maintaining a strong workforce, which we know um, this Board of Commissioners <coughs> supports as well. Um, for years, it was never had a problem getting employees in Garrett County Public Schools. We still recruit the best, but it does become more and more difficult every year, and we hope to continue to be able to att attract a, a great workforce. We also, you'll see the last paragraph, um, I continue to work with my cabinet team. The cabinet team continues to work with our instructional teams to address our utilization issues. Uh, we have a continued decline of student enrollment. Uh, those, uh, uh, along with the increased requirements of the blueprint, make it very difficult, if not impossible, to continue to maintain the current footprint. Our students and staff deserve our quality facility facilities that are safe and conducive to optimum learning. So in, co in, a, in coordination with the system's development of its blueprint implementation, my team will continue to work on solutions that best fit the needs of Garrett County and our students. Thank you. So um, as I've said many times when we come to this presentation and when I uh, present to the Board of Education, this is a long planning process. Uh, it begins in late September, early October with meetings with all of our teams. Uh, our principals each meet uh, with Allison and her staff and myself. We also consider all of the system-wide initiatives you see on the screen, ESSA, 
the ARP Act, the Blueprint, our CIP, and then any other initiatives that I determine, or of course our elected board find important as initiatives. And all of those are considered as we develop this budget. In addition to, each school has a SIT plan, a school improvement plan, and they also work with the departments to develop their goals and initiatives. And then, of course, anytime there is mandatory requirements, we embed those in all of the plans that you see there. All right, this budget, our highlights, uh, there are four of them. Uh, of course, these are not the only four things that we are concentrating on, but these are our big four. And the first being to accelerate our ad academic achievement. As I said, you know that we have had learning loss over the last two and a half to three years. So we want to continue to refresh our instructional resources and prioritize those and then utilize our restricted funds from federal and state to provide any additional resources we can to support our students and our teachers. You probably hear quite a bit about social and emotional well-being of our students and staff. Our student services team is working to realign our resources to meet our current needs. And our restricted funds, again, are utilized to provide additional resources that support um, those initiatives and also professional development in mental health needs, um, social emotional well-being. Uh, I already talked about attracting and maintaining a strong workforce. We feel very strongly that we have a great team and we have careful planning to make sure that we're building a strong compensation package so we continue to attract and recruit the best, of course. And then finally, sustaining safe in-person learning. Um, we are thrilled to be back to, to getting as close as we can to back to normal. Um, but that, of course, with all the PPE and all of the other supplies that we've needed and our air quality um, improvements, uh, continuing safe in-person learning is a priority of this budget. So at this time, I'll turn it over. Now when we want to talk about the uh, funding and revenue, we'll turn it over to Mrs. Schweitzer. So in the last couple of years, the landscape for um, public school finances has changed considerably as well as the programmatic piece um, because of the blueprint for Maryland's future legislation, as we call it, the blueprint. And so uh, for the purposes of this presentation, uh, the, there have been funding changes as well as uh, requirements that are placed upon us for spending. So the, this first slide, the funding changes that we have seen that we're working through with um, our partners at the Department of Legislative Services as well as MSDE to really understand what the legislation means, um, we have a couple things that are the same. The first thing is that the variables that um, result in our revenue are the same. We, we still um, receive state revenue based upon our enrollment count at 930 of each year, as well as the formula um, that, that calculates our county's wealth. And unfortunately, we have um, converging trends that are not beneficial for Garrett County Public Schools. Our enrollment continues to decline, whereas um, our relative wealth continues to increase, and it's driven mostly by the property values. Um, so then a couple things that have changed um, with the state funding is that a couple of the programs have, have gone away or they've been renamed. Um, and so unfortunately, Garrett County doesn't qualify for some of the pieces of funding from the state that we, we traditionally had received. Um, there are a couple pieces that have ended. Uh, mental health coordinator, uh, teacher salary incentive and students with disability grants have all been eliminated. Uh, the net taxable income adjustment has been replaced with the guaranteed tax based program and unfortunately we don't qualify for that piece of funding. So um, our supplemental grant that we've received um, for uh, over 10 years, it's a $1.2 million piece, is now been rebranded as an implementation grant and it phases away to zero by FY uh, 2030. So, uh, Allison, are you, are you later on gonna talk about the overall impact of those changes? What, yes. what kind, okay. Yes. 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 So then, and the piece that I think 
you gentlemen are going to be most interested in, and I know that Mr. Weeks is, is the maintenance of effort or the local uh, obligation. And so under the blueprint, there's a two-pronged test now. And um, according to the law, the local government is required to fund the greater of the local share, which is a, a piece that MSDE calculates, or the traditional maintenance of effort calculation. Now the maintenance of effort calculation has gone through a couple um, changes as well. There's um, what they're calling a smoothing effect on the enrollment. So uh, we take a three year average of the September 30th count rather than just the exact um, September 30th count. That's, that's the first change. Um, and then um, there's a, a new piece of legislation that's actually sitting uh, with the governor. Um, he can either veto it or approve it. It's House Bill 1450. And um, in that piece of legislation, um, it hard codes uh, the minimum amount that each county is required. Um, and so that, that piece is, is out there. And then what it does further is in FYA, fiscal year 2024, it removes the effect of this hold harmless amount that's in this HB 1450, removes it prior to um, processing or, or calculating the new maintenance of effort. Okay. So, the mandatory spending changes that we are seeing as a result of Blueprint. Um, what we have here are, are really just the budgetary impacts of, of just high level, um, high level changes. They do not include any of the programmatic changes that we really are still in the, in the um, <coughs> beginning phases of that, of that planning. But in fiscal year 23, we are required to provide a $10,000 increase to any teacher that has his or her National Board certified certification. And if that National Board certified teacher is teaching at, a at what is classified as a low performing school, that teacher would receive an additional $7,000. Also for fiscal year 23, um, there's a minimum school funding that has to be spent. Um, so each of our funding sources, um, when we take the state contribution for the program, plus what you'll see is the local share, and that's coming up in a couple slides, that total must be spent 75% at the school where that enrollment attends. And so, and by that program. So if it's compensatory services or compensatory ed formula funding, it needs to be spent on students that are free and reduced meal students. And we're, we're, we're going, this is a completely different way of how we are, uh, we have to report on our, what's supposed to be unrestricted funding. Do you, do you have a feel? Can we ask questions as we go? Or? Sure, absolutely. Do, do you, maybe it's something that's coming later. I've got a leg cramp, sorry. Um, so, the 75 or 100 percent, whatever is spent at that school, do you have you do you have a feeling yet for what that means and the way you manage your money and what the overall impact is? Yes. So you could end up short somewhere else because yes. you have to spend absolutely. money. Absolutely correct. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. yes. And really, what what is this legislation has been designed to do the, the spirit is for the money to follow the student that triggered the yeah. reason for this the lea the local education agency to receive the funding so it's also important to note uh, on the first bullet right now we do not have any schools uh, i was talking about accolades a little bit ago uh, we don't have any that meet the state definition as being required to be named low performing school which is uh Great, so we we, um, we don't have any, but that could certainly, uh, you know, that could certainly change, and then we would be responsible for an additional funding for any of our national board certification for any teachers that 
would if we happen to have a low performing. But right now, Garrett County Schools does not have any schools that are designated low performing. So then in FY24, or fiscal year 24, um, we must be able to prove to the Accountability Implementation Board for Blueprint that uh, Garrett County has provided a 10% salary increase to teachers. This must be above the negotiated schedule. So this is something that um, obviously it's, it's over time, but we are cognizant of trying to attain, attain that, um, that certification. So, and then programmatically, um, we, we currently do not have any concentration of poverty schools. Um, but in fiscal year 2024, we possibly could. Uh, the way the legislation is written is that in each year, the threshold of the free and reduced meal students come, is reduced a little bit. So um, depending on what, what happens, we do see a trend that possibly one of our students, one of our schools, could become a concentration of poverty. So the 10% salary increase from 2019 to 24 is, is that's funded 50-50 uh, like we do over? Um, would 50% of that come from the state and 50% come from the county? Unfortunately, we're not quite 50-50 because of the wealth um, factor. So it, so what? So what? it's, it's um, about 55, 45 for unrestricted. The count, 55 county. Mm -hmm. You're going to talk later here about what that means in terms of future costs. I guess I need to wait. So. <laughs> Sorry. No, we're happy to answer them as we go. Remember, we've done this six <laughs> times right here. We, we can anticipate some of the things yeah. you're going to ask. <laughs> okay. And career ladders. Oh, yes. And then we have the career ladders in, that are required by fiscal year 2025. Um, and then the, mi the minimum teacher salary in fiscal year 2027 needs to be $60,000. So, and we're already working towards that. We haven't. We're not waiting until it's closer. We're we're already working towards all of those. Yeah. So, uh, we did feel that it was necessary to share with you guys the um, some budgetary challenges that we had while we were um, working on collaborating um, to prepare this, this proposed budget. It's not a secret that we are in a very, very high inflationary time period. Um, that, um, that threw a wrench in, uh, in a lot of uh, the planning that we've done, especially for like contracted services, our license renewals, um, a lot of our projects, our maintenance, our operations, um, we, we've seen a, a large, a steep increase in our goods and services. As you'll see, uh, we're looking at, at pretty much flat funding um, overall, uh, whereas inflation is about 7.5%. So, so that's challenging. Um, obviously, we have the blueprint for Maryland's future that we're taking into account. We've we've been talking about that, and then we we do have this underutilization and enrollment decline um, problem issue um, that that we're still we're trying to work through. Um, it's getting more and more challenging every year to provide the services to our students at, at 12 schools. So. Okay, so uh, this chart. Um, is the uh, summary of all of the revenue and um, that, that we're anticipating. And you can see uh, it's side by side with fiscal 22 um, and the 23 preliminary draft numbers come straight from MSDE. Um, and this is where you'll see that uh, there are a couple uh, pieces of funding where we're receiving zero this year and, and in prior years we've received funding. So the foundation program, that, that's, the, that's the very first uh, line under the summary of major state aid programs. And that's nearly 25% higher year over year. And according to uh, the, the experts on the blueprint legislation, 
that was by design that, that all these other pieces that were going away, this, this large increase to the foundation per pupil was supposed to overcome all of those pieces that were either sunsetting or being renamed. And so, you know, it, it, it kind of did. It's about 3.1% higher state year over year. Um, however, we, we are still, um, you know, we're, we're looking at the county maintenance of effort there. And we have, we are going to request a little bit higher than what the, the legal minimum is. But we are no longer utilizing prior year balance fund. Um, we've gotten to a, a point where we, we can't do that anymore per our policy, per the board's policy. Uh, so at this point, we have, um, we have not used any fund balance. It's important that we're living within our means, that we're uh, right-sizing this unrestricted budget. Because as you'll see, uh, Mr. Nolf, you want to flip over to the next um, to the next one. But you're saying that you're a local board's policy, or the, the state local board. board of education's yeah. policy. Yes, and it's in conjunction with the county commissioner's policy as well. They 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 reference each other. Um, but my point is that it's important that the elected Board of Education is living within the unrestricted means because when you look at, at this chart, this is the full picture. So this shows the unrestricted and the restricted funding for a total. And right now we have, we are receiving unprecedented amount of federal funding. And we're, as a management team, we are working diligently to make sure that what we're spending these dollars on can be either one time in nature or there's a plan to sustain it through either finding other restricted funding sources or pulling it into the unrestricted budget in some manner. So there's a lot of planning, a lot of strategic planning happening yeah. with the, these federal funds that, that you're saying. And so what, what it's effectively doing is it's, it's actually the percentage that the, that the local government is funding of the total has decreased um, a little bit because of all of these federal funds. But we're, like I said, very, very mindful that um, by the end of FY24 and when we're planning for budget year 2025, that we need to be very careful about how we're spending these dollars. Okay. So this chart is the chart that is that I felt was necessary for um, you gentlemen to understand what this local share means. And so what MSDE has done is prepared a per pupil total amount of what each of these state aid programs should be funding per, per pupil. And then based upon the wealth of each county, that's how we get the split between what the state share is, what the local share is, and then the total. So um, when we, when people are, are I don't want to say spinning it, but when they're digesting this legislation and they say, okay, well, you know, each national board certified teacher is going to receive $10,000 extra next year, but you're going to get money for that. Well, we kind of are. <laughs> so we get the $25,000 here from the state. But in order to make up the, the full 60,000, you're taking from your local share to, to cover that. So Jim, you said 50-50, you can see it's not 50-50 to make up the full 60,000. So that is where the, the local piece of funding is now being restricted for use um, because we are responsible for reporting expenditures in these programs. So special education formula of this amount, this total amount, and we're receiving this much state aid, but we 
we are required to utilize our local in a way that the state is telling us we have to utilize it. Whereas before, we had local autonomy to, to spend it on perhaps pre-K or you know, if, if, our, if our special education needs weren't as, as high this year, maybe we were using it for a, a construction or a maintenance project or we were using it for some sort of a CTE uh, piece of equipment that we were, we were moving around. But unfortunately, under Blueprint, we're, we're being required to spend our money in a different way. So um, this is the this is the big picture. Make sure we talk about this part or no? It doesn't matter, I guess. It's fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. We'll okay. um, so this chart uh, provides a big picture area like snapshot of the big ins to the budget and the big cuts from or the big ads, the big cuts. So um, this coming year, we, we have some contractual salary increases. Those are, those are items that are negotiated in the contract that because a staff member achieves something, they receive additional compensation. It's not part of the negotiated pro negotiation process. Uh, we, did, we are going to see an increase in our Maryland State Retirement Employer contribution, the percentage increased as well as um, right now we have so many staff members that have been hired um, under our federal funding that we're, we are paying in on their behalf as well. Uh, we did need, need to increase transportation. Um, we have, we've been kind of eking out uh, pieces of funding to transfer to, to increase there, but we're at the point where in order to uh, maintain those local partnerships with our contractors, um, it's, it's time to increase those pretty substantially. And then we do have a placeholder for a compensation package. So um, this is, um, it is a placeholder, negotiations are ongoing, um, and when they are finalized, there, there may be a budget um, a budget amendment required. Where, where does uh, your health care costs have gone up properly or are going yes. up? Are, are, yes. Are, is that reflected in here somewhere? The comp, the package is both. The package is there's is salary and benefits. Okay. So that placeholder encompasses both of those. Thank you. So then the decreases that we see is our, um, in our food service transfer. So we have changed our model of staffing for our food service um, food service labor force um, and so we were able to reduce that a little bit um, our special education non-public placement that is when we have a student that unfortunately for whatever reason must attend um, an instructional program outside of Garrett County uh, we are required to pay for that uh, so we were able to reduce that um, amount that budget allocation um, we did uh, reallocate positions from our unrestricted budget to restricted. Um, it was about 2.17 uh, FTEs. And then we also have reduced the number of positions um, overall uh, by six teachers and one IA. Um, all of those reductions have been through attrition, uh, through retirement or separation of some sort. So this is a snapshot side by side, uh, year over year of our, the proposed budget by category. Um, we've already discussed a couple of the, the decreases. So the food service transfer had a, a large decrease. Uh, the maintenance, um, the maintenance category, we did reallocate uh, funding from maintenance uh, to operations. Our pupil services has decreased um, because we have restricted or we have shifted a staff member to restricted funding. Um, and our special education has decreased. Uh, there were a number of positions and we've changed um, some of our medical assistance um, funding, how, how, who we're paying out of that as well. Um, 
our health services has increased um, and, and that's also due to those changes from the medical assistance billing. You see that pupil transportation has increased. We talked about that, um, add to the budget. Um, and then um, all, primarily the other increases are driven by either the estimated compensation package um, or just increases um, to contracted services or supplies and materials. Um, our custodial supplies have really um, increased substantially. So, okay. And then here's just a pie chart to show. Um, by category, instruction is by far our biggest spend, um, as it should be. And um, there aren't really a lot of uh, variances, you know, great variances between the percentages here. Have okay. You, have, you, have you ever looked to see how this compares to other school systems in the state? Like you're spend, you're saying almost forty percent of your budget goes to instruction. Right. Do you know? Is that pretty typical of most counties that have our demographics in terms of enrollment and stuff? Or do you, do you have any idea how that compares? Is there a state standard for that, for example? There's no they, state standard. No. I'd say uh, it's probably pretty comparable, but we certainly uh, would be an interesting research to see other districts, uh, like you said, as similar to us in uh, demographics. But my guess is it's between you know between instruction and some of the uh, things that go along with that, and fixed charges, et cetera. I think we're probably a few yeah, close. I, you probably don't have it, but it, it, it would be interesting to see that. If there was a trend there over time too, are you spending mm -hmm. less and less on instruction or more? I don't, I don't know how you can spend more, but because you have all these other obligations mm -hmm. that you're having to do, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the side by side year over year by object. And, um, by far, our biggest spend is in, in salaries, uh, but we did have a large decrease in our equipment. Um, we have reallocated uh, about 50% of what our equipment had been um, to inflationary increases in supplies and materials and contracted services. Uh, that transfer line um, includes that food service as well as that non-public placement that we talked about. Um, the increases are in supplies and materials, and that um, one piece of that is that there is a, a pretty large spend that's planned for next year for one-time instructional purchases. Um, we are we are working on on that because there are a couple um, resources that need to be updated, a couple um, curriculums that need to align with current standards. Um, and then there's obviously new testing that has come out. So, so there are some, there's some changes that have to occur there. Okay. And then here we have the pie chart. Um, overwhelmingly salary and fixed charges is the largest uh, spend. And, um, okay. So this is a list of our capital requests. Um, this is a superintendent recommendations. Uh, the board has not approved this. Um, we are hopeful that at the April 12th meeting, we will have a, elect, a, board, of, a board of education approved for budget that we can send over to, to you all. Um, but um, so it's in these requests, um, Superintendent Baker has uh, she explained her goals with, with uh, respect to um, the instructional areas and we're really focused on air conditioning right now and enclosing that open space. Um, and so uh, Mr. Wazlowski and myself have worked very closely with our regional director at the IAC and um, we have received approval for air conditioning at Northern High School and Yacht Glades. Uh, the reason we we proposed those two schools to begin the air conditioning initiative is because when you when they're uh, 
when they're comparing our projects to the other schools in the whole state, they're looking for the least amount of air conditioning in a building that, that moves them that project up in priority. So Northern High School and Yaw Glades had the least percentage of air conditioning. I believe it was only their offices and maybe <clears throat> Northern High had two or three um, classrooms. So that's why we started there. Um, and then we do hope uh, to bring forth for next year, uh, the Southern High School air conditioning project. So it, and the, the AC installation at Northern High School also aligns with the boiler replacement. So that would all fall under healthy schools. Uh, whereas if it were a capital improvement project through the state, we have a finite amount of dollars that we can capture in the capital improvement plan. However, when you start looking into or peeling off the layers of some of these other programs like healthy schools, you're really comparing your building or your project to that of the, across the state. And so the dollars aren't necessarily earmarked for each county. So that's why we're really looking at this Healthy Schools uh, grant program to, to achieve our air conditioning <clears throat> goal. And the 90-10 funding doesn't apply? It there. does apply. It does apply. Yes, it does apply. Uh, Allison, so on this chart, what you have as state, all of these projects you've been given preliminary uh, approval that the state would fund those? Yes. And then yes. is this 1.6, we'll round it to 1.7, your ask or is some of this, um, like I'm looking at this E-rate for IT hardware. So will that 45,000 be through E-rate or are you asking us for the 45,000? We're asking you for the 45,000 so that we can get the 70% match. Gotcha. <clears throat> yeah. So I didn't capture that like other column. I guess no, I just wanted to make sure everybody but, And like that. the Maryland <laughs> First communication project, that's the those like beefed up radios yeah, right. that go on our buses and we bought the first phase with our Safe Schools grant right. money. Um, and not knowing exactly what that, that funding is going to look like next year, we really want to make sure that the project gets gets complete. So that's why right. that is on here. So the Northern High, oh. Mr. Nall, if you could go back one one more. Okay, so then the Northern High Vestibule, that $50,000 request of local government is so that we can spend 200,000 that was approved in FY22 um, on Northern High School. For state, the, state or county? State, 200,000 state. And un unfortunately the bids came in right. over the 200,000. So we, we it, the project is very important and it would make it the two high schools equitable in terms of their safety vestibules. So. Right. Okay. We've, we've really tried to concentrate on air quality, knowing what we know about the comfort of edu and educating students, safety, certainly, uh, you know, Southern Mill renovation is the, is the a big one that we've been trying to do for quite some time, um, but as she said, the communication project is for safety, the, uh, the security vestibules, even the paving, you know, the project that we've been working on at Northern High included lighting, which was a safety issue. So uh, we've really tried to concentrate on those kinds of things um, to not only improve instruction and the quality inside, but also safety inside and out. On, on the state funding, um, have, have they expressed concern about your capacity utilization when they funded these? Okay. Yeah, we, we actually had a project that wasn't funded because of utilization. Okay, so we're ready okay. for the... Okay, Mr. No, if you go to the, there's one last slide, I think. So this, this final slide, um, you'll see our request uh, for the operating funding, $28,817,097. And the capital funding at 
like 1.7 as uh, was rounding up, that will allow us to achieve with the 90-10, 7.5 million of state funding. Um, but again, the entire budget is proposed, including the capital projects. Uh, it is up for uh, possible approval at the April board meeting, in which case then it would become the Board of Education budget. So these right now are uh, requested capital funds and request operating request. And uh, we didn't do a thank you question slide, but we can entertain any, uh, we'll, we'll leave it on this slide so you can see what our <coughs> request will be. Uh, any, we're ready to entertain any additional questions that you may have. Or all five board members are here, thank you. So one, one question I have, um, more for clarification than anything else. So this is a 23 request. You went through your uh, funding challenges looking into the future. And we, we know there's going to be challenges coming across the board in every organization that we fund, uh, probably greatest with, with the public schools because they're our largest uh, organization. FY25. Uh, we know there's going to be uh, some significant challenges there because federal funding is going to run out and some other things. Um, I'm assuming, uh, as in, and I know you guys do a, a good job with this, but as we're looking at 23, and I know as you're looking ahead at 24, and I'm sure there'll be some other questions coming up about this, you know, looking down the road, are we preparing for 25 now? as we're moving forward, because we're, we're looking at the ESSER funding running out, we're looking at uh, blueprint implementation, basically fully implemented there for right. most things. I mean, there's going to be some, that, that year is going to be pretty challenging, and then moving forward. Right. Um, and really that's what, you know, we don't, we don't ever just build it on the current year, but this year more than any, you're absolutely right, and you've been in some of those meetings where we have um, looked at 24, 25, knowing uh, the more we plan now. We always look at efficiencies uh, in schools, right-sizing them, and administration, uh, but this year probably more than any because we don't want a huge funding cliff in 25 that we wouldn't be able to uh, sustain. So we certainly are planning ahead uh, to the out years when we know a lot of the other funding is going to run out. And the 28, the, the operating funding request, is that, is that the, because I know there was some question about this, is that the state mandated amount or it's is that not. over the state? It's over the right? state, it's over the state mandated amount because the information we had when we, when we balanced the budget was that MSDE interpreted Correct. a specific <clears throat> line in the legislation as if there was the escalator, which is 1.6 this year, you you multiplied that per pupil twice. Right. And so then MSD and the Department of Legislative Services kind of, eh, and then out came <laughs> House Bill 1450. And so they basically said, okay, we're writing it, we're hard coding it. And it was the, the hard coded number is basically a hold harmless. So it's, it's the greater of last year's funding from your local government or what the per pupil with the one time escalator, not the double escalator, but the one escalator. And so then in FY24, uh, we must remove that hold harmless amount because for Gare County, uh, the greater was the FY22 amount and so in order to get back down to what that escalator amount would have been, it's we have to remove the $342,000 uh, prior to beginning our calculation for FY24. So by with that legislation, you know, we were we were as a team, right. we had been planning for 25 and and feeling that by all estimates 24 was going to be pretty flat. Uh, we were we were planning to pull out that um, that fund balance piece that we'd been relying on, that crutch, we've been, we pulled it out so that we could right size the budget. 
And then it's kind of like the bottom dropped out because by removing that 342,000, when we estimate out based upon today's enrollment numbers, we're looking at about $1.2 million less in maintenance of effort. So let me stick with that for a minute because there's a method in my madness here. So does this recalibrate the maintenance of effort per student? If, if, sure we, if we fund over the mandated amount by the state, right. you're, if we fund this request, yes. Does that recalibrate maintenance of effort per student? Now, understand as, no. so as that, the decline happens, the right. real dollars will decrease, right. but is right. the amount per student increased because of this number? It will, but remember, we're still, you'll take this number, whatever whatever the, the commissioners decide to fund, you take that number, and before you start doing any of your per pupil calculations, you pull out that 342,000. Right. No, the, re the reason I ask year. that is, um, is there anything in this ask that could be pulled into a one-time non-recurring request? And, and what you're saying though, Possibly. is it doesn't really matter because you deduct the 342 off of that right away when you go into yeah. next year's maintenance of effort. Yeah, and I understand what Paul is mm -hmm. trying to do, yeah. but quite honestly, and I knew you were going to ask this question, <laughs> there is not there is not anything I'm that trying they to, I'm trying to make sure we get you the money that you I need understand. I understand. without committing to a long no, term. I understand. Yes. <clears throat> I do understand, but we're at a point where we we already knew that we were so tight and that's why you see the requests under capital that you do. Um, you know, and so I don't know that I could come up with $111,000 of, of one time that we could call capital, you know. Mm -hmm. um, well, the operating fund request, if I'm doing the math right, it's only like $112,000 over last year. Right. Which compared to the year before, you got seven hundred and forty right. some thousand right. dollars. Right. Now you still have, I don't know, 125 fewer students than you had last year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Joe, part of one of the things you said earlier that it's going to be a dilemma in 2025 is the ESSER money is all the way to the program. It's great because we're, we're doing after school programs, summer programs, tutoring, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we're, we're getting better at, at educating our students, but then all of a sudden the money runs out. Now, how do we fund those continuing programs? Let's come out of our operating budget. That's the only way we'll be able to, to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a couple notes here about that. Yeah, so yeah, it's going to ask. Yeah. So. I mean, that's, yeah, it's, it's, well, you know, even with fewer around. students, greater need right now. I would sure. say we have we do have fewer students, but yeah. with the with the recovery and the pandemic, yeah. the needs are greater. And and as Allison said earlier in the presentation, we do try very very hard to right size. We try hard to make recommendations that we feel will, um, of course, be the best use of taxpayer dollars. And when we have come to you for our presentations. Uh, we have always tried to work within the maintenance of effort. Um, this year, because of the timing and because of the original guidance, uh, we are we did decide to ask for a little bit above. Um, but we're hopeful, and we know we're the we know we're the greatest amount that you have to fund. Well, I, um, I, I, I think we, we do have a lot of needs right now. That, yeah. As Mr. Wood said, we're going to have to find a way to continue to sustain. Well, let me say first of all. That comes across in the presentation that you're concerned you understand where you're at and that things are going to get worse before they get better mm -hmm. and um yeah. you know I, I i was at a mako legislative reception i think it was the last week of march and this guy looked me up alex donahue mm -hmm. yeah and uh he singled me out come up and started mm -hmm. talking to me from the know. iac yes yeah he's, he's those gentlemen that he's one the, of the presenters Deputy Director of Field Operations right. or something. And we started talking about it. And and, and uh, he said, you know, if, if Garrett County could right-size its school system, that they could save, he used a number of $290 million over the next 30 years. Now, I guess that's an estimate. What if he's half right? <laughs> I mean, what if he's a quarter right? I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen in 30 years? But I, you know, I asked, I, I went back and, Ask Scott to dig up some information for me, and and I know you guys, I know you all are tired of hearing me say this, but he put together a chart that shows basically enrollment and expenses, and 
you know, you're, you're at the point, I think, I mean, I, I went back and read the, um, I don't know what the title was of the thing that you presented to the elected board, but it talked about grade banding and some right. facility other utilization and grade yeah, banding, and, 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 and vice versa. And it was basically getting down to where you had suitable or acceptable capacity utilization. This guy's comments were based on the fact that you're right size, not where he got the number from. Oh well, maybe from that presentation because he talked about seven or eight schools. And you know, I've been talking about this for years now and I think the elected board now is a victim you're where you're at because 10 years ago 15 years ago my opinion nobody else's the elected board didn't do what they should have done which was look five ten or fifteen years ahead you know we keep thinking that school enrollment's going to increase that people are going to buy homes and move here there, there's only the real estate sales at an all-time high there's only 80 homes left on the market real estate you know, it's over. And they didn't move here and enrollment didn't go up. It went down another 125 or whatever the number is. I mean, you're down, if I did this right, in the last 10 years, you're down about 750 yeah. students. I don't know if that's right or not. And, and you continue, you know, I don't know where it bottoms out at, but what I heard in your presentation, when I look at the numbers, it tells me the elected board hasn't acted yet on your proposal. And it tells me you all going to have to you're going to have to act on that plan. I know there's some tough decisions in there, but you don't have you don't have any daggone choice, man. I mean, when you start looking at some of this stuff and you consider, and I think you said this, right now there's money everywhere, state and federal money everywhere. That's that's all going to dry up, and then you're going to be stuck with all these things that are being implemented, and there's not going to be local money to pay for it. And if you don't get the capacity utilization in line, then you're not going to be able to get the money and take advantage of the 90-10 split. Right. And with George and Wendell leaving, I'm sorry, but the 90-10 split, there's no guarantee that's going to that's going to stay around. And if, if we lose the 90-10 split, we're basically screwed on trying to do some of the things that we need to do to get to get to where we need to be. Can we ask the longevity uh, to Alex what the longevity of that split is? It's every two years. Every two years. Yeah. yeah. So, right. so we know we're we trying to mm -hmm. that right now. And you know, with Senator Edwards, there was 40 years of relationships and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to me that he was able to get the 90-10 thing. But that's, as you said, that's perishable. Mm -hmm. And the next senator isn't going to be from Garrett County. Mm -hmm. And so, right. and won't ha and won't have 40 years yeah. of friendships and experience and all that kind of stuff. So, it's. It's not un unreasonable to think that we could do that. And, and from what you also said, we're not at 50-50 anymore. We're at 55-45. Mm -hmm. That could get worse, too, with all the development oh, we have and new housing and all that stuff around the lake and the decrease in enrollment. Our share could go from 55 yeah. to something else. I don't, I don't know the formula well enough to know what it is. Well, I think our wealth has always hovered right around five, six in there somewhere on that chart. And then... And then, from what you've said, with the blueprint for Maryland's future, you're going to have, it's, a, it's pretty apparent, you're going to have less, flex, less flexibility and control on how the money's spent. Much less. Much less. For one thing, you're going to spend a lot more time trying to calculate everything and report <laughs> everything, but on top of that, yes. you're not going to have the flexibility you've had in the past about where you use yeah. the money. Uh, it's just very um, concerning right now, and it, when you look at and I know you're all aware of this, but when you look at the, if I read if I read the report right, the capacity utilization is about 58 percent overall. It's 52 in the north and 56 in the south, I think, or something like that. I I, I don't know, but we can't keep. I, I just don't see how we can keep doing things the way we are. And what I would suggest, and I I hope we haven't. I talked the last year about a window of opportunity with the 90 and George and Wendell leaving and a board that I think you have a good relationship with. You know, I, I wouldn't want you to miss the opportunity to, to come up with a plan that the Board of County Commissioners could say, mm -hmm. we agree, we're supporting you on that. And, and to get away, and not to say, well, that's the Board of Education. We only have to do, you want to close the school, complain to them, not us. But we got to have a plan that we can all we got to have a plan that we can all agree on and we can implement. And the windows 
the windows close them pretty rapidly right now. If you want, I think your proposal talked about starting things in 2023, I think. Correct. And so. Yeah. In our five-year strategic plan, the, the next step was the Southern Middle School uh, facility study, the feasibility study, and the uh, at specs, which is the next step. Um, but I think you're referring to the presentation that we gave in February on the facility utilization yes. of the grade band yes. with a recommended grade band of yeah. uh, pre-K to 6 and yes. 7 to 12. Yeah. Uh, we believe with the blueprint we could really add value to our 7th and 8th grade. Uh, we've had some other people ask about why 7th and 8th grade. Um, but there's so much of the plan, I think you said, that's contingent upon other parts of the plan. Because uh, the next step is the once we decide what happens with those two schools, then what do we do in the north? What do we do with the central office? You know, so that was a relatively bold plan and recommendation, but recognizing that it's the most difficult decision that that the board can make. Obviously, it's there's very an old, difficult. There's an old saying, Norm. It's there's nothing like getting shot at to give you a clear head, and that's kind of where you're at. Well, yeah. Right now, I think. <laughs> We've always had a pretty good working relationship. I, don't shoot us. We're, we are. Uh, no, but I, but mean, I, I do understand um, what that, you. That plan that you came up with is at least in my opinion, what we've been asking for for several years now. But I think you got a plan now. Let's you, you got to get on with it. I mean, I I'm not Remember, on the board. We just got the funding. The funding just became available too for you and us to go forward with the plan. At 50-50, it was never going to be a plan. I agree. To do a lot. <laughs> well, to do a lot. Yeah, we yeah probably lost a year anyway. But hey. Well, um, we really, you know, we we. We appreciate that. We see that as a gift. We see that as a blessing that we asked for years, as soon as it was 50-50, and it took a long time. So we do want to take advantage of many dollars under that 90-10 as we absolutely can. I look at your capital request here and the, and the project that you've got listed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I look at this and, and, and I'm saying to myself, I, I think these these are okay projects, I'm not arguing that. But what happens um, if you get into a situation, and I think this is what Jim's alluding to, that we spend money on a school here, let's let's pick out Yacht mm -hmm. Lanes. Let's say we spend money on that school. Two or three years down the road, you've got to close that right. school. Here we right. spent, we spent uh, you know, right. two, two, two million, over right. two million dollars on that school. Not saying that's going to be the school, but there, right. uh, the. Well, I, I'm sure. I think the imp implication here is that <coughs> at some point in time, we've got to consolidate some schools. I mean, I, I think that's. And, and really, just, over the last couple of years, I'm sorry to interrupt you. That's okay. We we have really tried to look at which schools we believe would remain open, no matter if any consolidation. Northern High School, Southern High School, um, Yacht Blades would. Generally, it's one of our newer schools. So right. We are hoping that it would remain open, and maybe there could be some other. Uh, the plan that the, the, you know, that we are operating, you know, moving towards. Um, so most of the projects we've looked at are schools that we know will continue in our footprint, and, so and that we don't look, have that And I look issue. at that, and I think that's yeah. very much yeah. the case. Um, it's a shame we didn't have this um, this mm -hmm. split several years it ago is, with Southern is. Middle yeah. School yeah. renovation. Yeah. It, it yeah. could have been done. Yep. Yep. But, uh, because the need doesn't go away. Just because we don't have the projects listed, yeah. because we're not sure if those schools will be sustainable, they still have capital needs to make sure that the students are safe and the staff is safe. So it isn't like those, those projects, we just don't need them anymore. We still need them. We've just tried to concentrate on the schools that we know, or at least believe, that the elected board will keep in our footprint and that we've recommended and, to keep And I appreciate that fact, I really do. Yeah, my, I can be honest with you, I didn't know if there's anything that had anything. <laughs> well, you know, I, our problem is that um, it's not just the Board of Education costs that are going to go up um, when all this right. state and federal money goes away. There's all kinds of other mm -hmm. unfunded mandates that we're getting, everything from body cameras to, I mean, they're, they're lots of them so um, it, once you start looking beyond the, the next two or three years it gets it gets a little scary in terms of where mm -hmm. the costs are going to be and where we're going to get the revenue to it does. fund all those things so um, mm -hmm. 
and the housing values are only going up, so I, I would imagine our wealth formula, our, our wealth will stay <coughs> about the same. So I think our funding will stay about the same, if not worse. But you're right. The, you know, we really are planning as far ahead as we can for, so that we don't have a cliff. I appreciate that. Well, the only thing I'll add to that is, you know, to, to Larry's point, and, and you're absolutely right that it's been noticeable over the last couple of years that the renovation requests, and I use that term loosely, any kind of improvements to a building, capital improvements seem to be relatively well targeted for longer term planning. But I think maybe, Larry, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but, you know, the other thing as we're planning forward is we have to have the we have to plan well to know what buildings are going to come up for future renovations because I don't know, Scott, how much money we spent on Southern Middle School a couple of years ago. Uh, we put a new roof on it. We put some new other things in it. And if we come in and renovate that building, which I think should have been done a long time ago, that's money we just wasted. It well, could have went but it won't else. be because yeah. of the scope of what right. we're talking about with the renovation because the state doesn't want us to scrap those systemic projects either so the roof the sewer fire. line and the fire alarm fire the fire system. system will remain intact so the what we're looking at is a different scope than what was brought to the county commissioners as a renovation for southern middle school before well, it'll be good. it'll be more like a open space enclosure a lot like what we're doing at grantsville where we basically gutted the inside and then we've made walls that make sense so that so that we can we can have doors and they're safe but it but we wouldn't be and there might be some other things that have to happen there might be some some plumbing issues that we might have to address um, because of the lead right. uh, legislation changes uh, there might be some other things like that that are that are systems but it would be more of a it wouldn't be a complete gut job the way that Northern Middle renovation had okay. been and what Southern Middle had been planned right. to be. Well, that's good news. Yeah, and that's why we selected those three projects <laughs> because we knew they would sustain that school um, <clears throat> if if we were lucky enough to get that building renovated. Getting closer, and we're really hopeful. Yeah, well, part of the real dilemma that obviously we face and you're aware of is, is student losses. And, and, and you said that, what's the basement of that student loss? I, I don't know that we have any idea what it's going to be. Because, you know, Garrett County, I mean, to be just factual, is a retirement county. People move here to retire. It's getting People move here to start families. <laughs> you know, they, they, they move here to they don't have children. Um, so, you know, it's a double whammy on us a little bit. Yeah, we get some tax dollars from us, but it hurts us educationally because our wealth value goes up. Uh, <clears throat> and we don't get the students that we need to, to get more money from the state. So, you yeah, know, those, those people don't have kids in school, so they're not particularly they interested care. in paying. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Uh, so yeah. it, it's very difficult to look to the future as to what the future might be. And, you know, with private schooling and you know, homeschooling, all those things are, are taking a hit. Yeah. You know, That's a trend nationally, too. Yeah, I mean, it not is. Too. It's not just, yeah. It's you not go across just the state of West Virginia and see what that trend's going to be next year. Right. Right. They get the money. Those, those families yeah. get the money. The voucher with them. Yeah, so. but we've also analyzed that <coughs> as well. When 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 the decline, we don't know precisely every single student, but it looks like the trend data is people moving, younger families moving out of the area is a large one, um, and then as Mr. Wood said, other families moving well, in that don't have young children. Well, it's kind of like Tom said. We've we've annually we've had more deaths and births every year since 2008 it's not that they're just right. leaving it's yes. just that they're not exactly. here and there's a few having, exceptions right. they're having less children there are some of us yeah. some of you um, you'll get a small not ever you speak, speak, help. speak for yourself <laughs> hey i was gonna i was gonna say there'll be a small enrollment <laughs> yeah i i said earlier when we were talking my family's doing it's just to increase enrollment in garrett county it's not me personally but my my family too but it's it is it's a combination of a whole bunch of things not just it's less people having less children people moving uh graduating more than than kids are coming in you know so we're aware of all those factors and we're working to to find ways that we can attract people to our school system because you know, we think it's great and it we, is great. we want the kids that are eligible to be with us 
but you also want to spend your money on classroom instruction, not on we do. a bunch of utilities. We that absolutely facilities do. You don't. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll, uh, any other questions, comments? I think I, I, think I used up my quota. Thank so. you. Uh, uh, this will be the last time that you'll present uh, your budget to this board. Uh, we have at least one commissioner that won't be here the next go around. Uh, so maybe you won't get so many questions. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I speak for all three of us. Um, you know, it's, it's been obvious the last several years that the board, the elected board and the staff have tried very hard to come in with realistic expectations and work collaboratively to try to build a budget that can be funded. It's noticeable. It hasn't always been that way. Um, Thank you. And, and w I know we appreciate it, and there are certainly tough decisions uh, everywhere, and we're cognizant of that as well. But it is, uh, and, and most of the groups that we fund, I think, realize the situation of the last several years and have been... Uh, very honest about what requests are doable and and uh the school board certainly as our biggest fundee uh it is appreciated that there's obvious effort there it, it would be easy to come in and say we need 80 million dollars and everything's going to just be terrible if we don't get it um and then and then that doesn't and it's happened that way before and and nothing good comes out of that so this is uh it, it has been refreshing and uh we appreciate it and as I said at the very beginning, uh, I, I think my staff and I, and I'm sure the elected board, really appreciates the opportunity to come in and present where we spend the tax, de tax dollar and where we need to spend them and our initiatives, and just really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, it was a good presentation. And yeah, Mr. thank Ringo, you. I've she will. I'm sorry you won't be. I'm going to. So should we just I can prepare still come, the answers? I can still come and sit back in here. Yes. So uh, if I do get elected, I can still, I'll still, still have something to say. Absolutely. Um, All right. Thank you. Thank you. Sheriff's Department. Health Department. No, no Health Department. department. Um, I don't know. Scott, who's next on our agenda? Do you remember? For a budget request presentation. Hey, Rodney. I want you to have one of these. Sheriff, Sheriff's Department. Sheriff's Department and... I don't have that with you. That's all right. We'll post it. All right. Thank you all.